The Walt Disney Company scores a huge win as Disneyland Ford has reached approval, and now Disneyland can have one of the largest expansions they have ever had. Let's see what they're thinking and if they can get it right on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and I am joined today by the full panel here. Lou Wasserman's ghost, Vash Guy, and Culture Casino. Guys, it's almost like we've got a live show going right here without the you audience. Know, when, when you tell me the full panel is here, I feel like, did the rabbit die? Uh, oh, boy. Somehow, you know, it's a full panel of analysts or well, tests this is or the, something. This is the biggest news in the resort's history since the original 1996 uh, uh, re resort plan that transformed Anaheim from the little, you know, agricultural city turned theme park city to a resort city. So I think this is most appropriate to have everybody uh, with such a vast wealth of knowledge and all of these things here uh, to cover all this. Yes, absolutely. Vash, uh, Lou, you both watched the entire presentation. Uh, uh, I bowed night. out after what, four hours or something? And, uh, <laughs> uh, but hours. I didn't, so oh, you don't goodness. have to because I was editing. So. Culture, yeah. <laughs> Culture, did you also watch uh, any of this comment? No, I didn't have eight hours of my life to lose. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. I, wasn't, I, I had other things going on at the same time, you know, oh. like. Uh, yeah, I don't but, know, what was I doing? Knitting? No, I don't do that. Uh, anything would have been better. And knitting and knitting. <laughs> if I can wake up, make a Pee Wee's Big Adventure reference yeah. here, uh, Vash, take it away. Tell everybody what's going on. Absolutely, will do right here. So this out of uh, Scott Gustin right here. Let me just see if I can go ahead and share it on screen. Uh, yes, right there. Uh, Scott Gustin knew the Anaheim City Council voted early Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday, folks. This this. This city council meeting started at about five o'clock on Tuesday <laughs> and went until 1 a.m. So I think it was like nine and nine hours and some change. I mean, it was it was quite a bit right there to approve Disneyland Forward, a multi-decade plan to allow Disneyland to develop new theme park hotel and entertainment around its existing theme parks. The plan was unanimously approved in a seven to zero vote shortly after 1 a.m. Uh, one of the reasons why that was was because the public comment portion of the meeting lasted nearly four hours and included 84 speakers, nearly two-thirds of those in favor of the plan right there. And Ken Potrock, obviously, the president of Disneyland Ford, which, uh, sorry, the president of Disneyland, which we'll talk about more in a moment, was very enthused about this. But yeah, it was, it was long. It was drawn out. It was blown out. These things these things always happen because uh, I think we were talking in the show with their culture before Disney. Uh, I'm sorry. Anaheim residents have been burdened by Disney before in the past regarding these things. Yeah. And they get, they get really, they get really frustrated. They get really angry. They feel like a lot of the infrastructure is focused centrally on Disneyland and they're not, they're getting the short, uh, the short part of the stick. And you know what? You can't argue with them. A lot of, a lot of times these projects make living in Anaheim very difficult, especially during the course of expansion. And I think that one of the elements that I know we'll talk about the privatization of a street is going to be a major in convenience for those around and yes I, I gotta say i understand that this is going to be a huge pain in the butt for all these folks and we're talking primarily if you hold that picture you see where this thing says magic way up there that yellow stripe well the street going from the top to the bottom of the screen is that walnut i think that's walnut right the right one right so yeah everybody so just living the, uh, just to the left. left of the disneyland hotel and all those parking lots you see they're the people who are primarily affected by this as far as immediate uh, impact on their livelihoods and their life, not only as far as not losing that access of that road, but also as far as noise pollution and dust and all the rest of the stuff that will happen when, uh, what, 4,000 construction workers are tearing all that up and reconfiguring it. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, I, I feel for them as people, but they moved to the approach path to LAX, not and then suddenly said, there's noise here from airplanes. Uh, it's the same, it's the same mentality. If you don't, if, and you had people testifying at this meeting last night. Uh, well, you know, when we moved here, it was so great because we gave the kids annual passes and we could wave at them and they could walk over to Disneyland and spend the day. In other words, this was the actual real life version of planting them in front of uh, Disney plus as a babysitter. Like we talk about with Bluey or whatever. And then, surprise that giant monster right across the street it's never going to get up and breathe fire on us no it'll never ever ever happen sorry gang you knew the job was dangerous when you took it you bought it property right there where all that stuff is and yeah there's going to be traffic and, and speaking of the prior uh, uh, situation 
I remember when they first started talking about a second gate and the people in the area said, well, you can't, we already have so much traffic on Harbor Boulevard because of everybody getting off the freeway there and clogging our streets on their way to the park. And Disney said, oh, well, we can fix that. And they got to Caltrans and they built their own off ramp directly from the freeway into their parking lot. And suddenly all those businesses, you know, not just hotels, but Uh 7-Elevens and gas stations and souvenir shops that used to get all those people on their way out saying, hey, it'll be cheaper here than if we buy it at Disneyland. They would never saw those places again because they went into the property, out of the property and never anywhere else but the property. So this is all a pretty double edged sword. That's, of course, the late lamented Westcott that you're looking at there now. I've always wanted to go to Westcott. When can I when can I go to Westcott, Vash? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know when you can go to Westcott, but I mean, as early as 2003, that's when the third gate was going to be there. Right. So <laughs> they, hey, they where, a lot where of these that? promises before is what we're saying. Westcott was the initial plan as yeah. proposed in the 1990s for what Disney California Adventure eventually became. And it was going to be a sprawling, uh, complex with, with, uh, a, a, a redone monorail <laughs> line, people movers going from both, uh, Parking garages and yes, and it was a double decker park side. too. It was it was upstairs yep. downstairs to avoid going too high and being a a blight on the neighborhood or something like that. Yep. But this, um, uh, you know what this, I found this, amusing last please. night? The people that were pro were all. I mean, ninety nine percent of them. I've been a cast member for ten years and I work in HR and I'm going well. Of course you want this. You're going to get to hire a bunch of new people and keep your job and they'll probably get kicked upstairs. And people from the building trades, the uh, chambers of commerce. But there was a lady there from the Southern California Tourism something or other. I don't know what they call it, the board, the authority, whatever. And what she said was really, really funny because she didn't realize it. She was very good. She was about the most polished of all of the pro supposedly speakers. She said, people like to go on vacation to somewhere that's totally different from where they live and gives them new experiences. And I'm going, yeah. And that's why in the middle of California, you built California adventure for a park. That's 80% locals who've actually been to Yellowstone and actually been to the redwoods and actually been to all these places you're simulating in your park, the wine country, whatever. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Right. (laughs) It's, it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of being promised a, you know, uh, what what is it five mission star restaurant and what they end up building is a mcdonald's i mean that's 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 what a lot of people have equipped but it's a really to. expensive mcdonald's fast. oh yeah. <laughs> really well, of course the now most McDonald's is expensive, really expensive mcdonald's you can get and, to, and yes. by the way when they talk about new jobs because of the new 20 dollar minimum wage in california for fast food flippers yep. there's no people at mcdonald's anyway it's all robots or will be soon <laughs> the other thing they talked about they had the building trades guy you know, you're giving people, we have apprentice programs and they're getting into a trade and they're building a career and a future and they're learning pride in their work. And I'm going, yeah, like all those pictures we had of that new hotel uh, with the unfinished, um, uh, you know, the things that showed the last time we worked on this was three months ago and it's still sitting there unfinished or the the walls that weren't in. And the, I'm going, uh, which of these two things doesn't belong, you know, but there- there was a lot of promises right there. Apparently, they uh, not only did Disney have its experts, but the city had its experts there to talk about how uh, they're estimating. Uh, you said it before, Lou, about forty four hundred construction jobs for this thing right here, and and uh, what is it, two thousand I think permanent jobs uh, yeah, going forward at least at the at the start of it, and and so that that kind of gets us into like what Disneyland Ford is really about right here. Uh, I, th- I think it's really important to this to to distinguish. This is a zoning plan. This is not okay. They have the Imagine Possibilities page, and you see all this really kind of flowery, like, oh, look, uh, Tangled and Peter Pan. Look at all the all the stuff that Tokyo and Hong Kong's getting, and that's going to come to us. And it's like, no, that is not what this is. That is that is the sell from Disney to get you to buy in on this idea, and not necessarily to you, but the city of Anaheim residents for sure. This is this is well, you know, wiggling the fair, weenie in front of you and saying, hey, we're going to give you all this kind of stuff if you just to, if you just allow us to do this. To be fair, if your job is to run a ride, you don't care if it's a frozen ride, a Zootopia ride, or a uh, revamped sure. old ride, or a new ride. You just want the job. So in that sense, they don't care. But right. uh, if it, I live there, and I hate this because it's going to cut off the street I used to get to the freeway, and it's going to create noise and traffic, Telling me, yeah, but you'll get frozen. It's not exactly an answer, you know. 
Uh, yeah, yeah I, the, and I can tell you right now, there were some, there were plenty of city residents. And when they made residents. this big deal about putting in a crosswalk, right. can't the city do that anyway? They get some paint and they draw some stripes and boom, there's a crosswalk. What's the big deal? Yeah, but they made it the sound thing. like they were building an airport or something. They made it <laughs> sound massive. A crosswalk. Well, oh, again, God, that's Disney trying to for sell. A crosswalk. That's Disney trying to sell the city council on, hey, look, listen, you're going to get all these ancillary uh, benefits if you just do this deal right here. Things that maybe the city would have to pay for, uh, we're going to end up paying for. And they're only going to end up paying for uh, partially all this stuff. They commissioned their own uh, study, feasibility study, for example, on, on how many people actually use Magic Wave for this purpose, just trying to sell people on the idea that, look, uh, for what you sacrifice in Magic Way, there's a whole host of benefits that will be coming as part of this plan right here and they have this exponential figure to kind of show you with each expansion uh just like the hotel revenues alone i believe it starts at about 46 million it's kind of hard to see i'm sorry these were for the slides from that uh from that city council presentation is that is that but, donkey kong right there under star wars uh where is i'm just joking <laughs> what i liked last night among other things affordable housing Right. What is that yes. in Southern California? Yeah. What is that? Uh, I mean, I understand it's some kind of subsidized section, whatever it is. Uh, but still, th th what was it? Thirty million dollars they were going to put into that, something like that. And yeah, thirty I million dollars can afford that can fix the affordable housing situation in California. What is that? Is that a is that a train that takes you to the Midwest? I was going to say they're going to put beautiful encampments under all the overpasses <laughs> around around Disneyland, but uh, I thought they were there already for free, so. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you heard this. Uh, let me see if I can go ahead and find it right here real fast. Um, I have one other question. I don't know if you can answer. Um, there was a comment from the audience earlier, and I certainly have heard it before. It's been reported that Disney has spent $300 million, $160 million, I've heard, several different numbers for housing in Florida, yet only 30 million is being spent here in Anaheim. Ooh. Can you explain that? I'm glad you answered that question. I think there's confusing statistics that on that. So the contributions um, by Disney are very similar and equitable between um, here at the Disneyland Resort and the Walt Disney World. So in the same way that we are contributing 30 million to jumpstart additional investment into affordable housing for a, a larger project, we did the same in Walt Disney World. So in listening to what she says here, this is really, really crucial here. That project, we donated um, 80 acres of, well, I would say we contributed 80 acres of low cost land as a lease to the project, which then jump started a bigger affordable housing project with someone out there valuing it as 300 million but disney did not contribute the 300 million we jump started that project through our contribution of a low cost lease what did you see that did they you didn't see? give them the land stunned. they gave them a like lease on the land oh god oh. they didn't oh. <laughs> This is, I was like, well, what? what? I don't know why we started to talk about Sip Talk, but that's a revelation that I didn't know. That's oh. from a Disney representative for this project right here saying, oh, yeah, we didn't donate th you know, $300 million oh. worth of stuff. That's what somebody else valued it as. We just gave them a, a, a low rent lease. She right. is clutching her hands so hard yes. right now. Body language tells you everything. Guess what? Florida, you're contribution was just unmasked and you come out looking terrible <laughs> my goodness look at how tight her face is it's like all of her botox is busting I, um, you, that's that's information that they had they they did not want revealed but but of course they played the card that they needed to play hey that 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 other state that's completely opposite to us in many ways that happens to have a profitable disney park uh, I'm not saying Disneyland isn't profitable, just not nearly as profitable as Walt Disney World. Of course, the state uh, that let you op let us operate 24 seven when you were shut down here for 400 exactly. days. That's exactly state? the fertile economic environment, as opposed to this one where they have to go through eight hours of comment in order to expand <laughs> their parks. Uh, yes. She she hit her with a question that she needed to hit her with, and that is a that is an amazing revelation right there. 
I, I we should look back not during this video and find out how much Disney bragged about that three hundred million dollar valuation. And and by the way, when they said they gave them a low cost lease, what we should look at is comps on similar land and what the real lease price would be, because it's like if nobody wants the land anyway, saying I'm going to give you a discount on the lease is meaningless because nobody was going to lease it, buy it or anything else with it in the first place. But but, but understand it, somebody's going to have to defend this three hundred million dollar value. Maybe they need to march that by the judge that valued uh, the, the 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 a certain mansion in 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 Florida as you know. Yeah. Well, maybe they need to run it by the tax assessors that they're contesting with over how much Disney World is worth for for state uh, property taxes. That might be a good question too. <laughs> they, they they've lined themselves up for some stuff, but we don't have time to talk about this here. We need to get no. back to this project. Absolutely, hundred yes. percent. We have to move uh, forward. By golly, <laughs> forward. Ken Potrock was very. He he was attempting to say, "Oh well, you know, this thirty million dollar investment to affordable housing is just meant to be leveraged in some way. Usually, that's a sevenfold increase. That should be two hundred million. You I don't really like? know how that math works yeah, out. I, I'll tell you exactly how it works. You ever get these political oh, solicitations where? We're having a 10 times matching deal. If you give us 100 bucks, we've got somebody willing to give us 1,000 on your 100. That's what it is. They're saying the whole project is X. We'll give you this little bit, but unless you have this little bit, you can't go out then and solicit these grants from these various agencies to put up the rest of it, which is far more. So ah, uh, technically they're jump-starting the process, but uh, anybody could have. So Well, the, the, another uh, city council member asked uh, or uh, gave a gave a pretty good uh, description of what the hesitation is, at least for some, uh, not only Anaheim City residents, but city council members themselves right here. I thought this was really kind of fascinating because this is what we talk about every day on shows like this. Like direct resident feedback has been taken into account. Uh, the struggle that I have, the hesitation I have is what comes after those 10 years. And I've shared this with you, Ken. Uh, we've had a conversation, I think, last week uh, about this, the, the, the unknowns. And uh, my concern is that this agreement, similar to the 96 agreement, is binding future councils to an economy that we have no idea what it'll be, where your company will be, what the board looks like. Uh, there's a lot of uh, unknowns what your board will look like and he he knows what's going on he understands wow. that there's chaos in c-suite he understands that there's not going to be there uh, getting for, permission for to do here. it doesn't mean you're compelled to do it exactly and look in the first 10 years yeah there are some there are some uh, uh compulsions there in terms of uh, you know spend and so forth they had to get projects done by a certain deadline but like you said Disneyland Ford's supposed to be a 30 maybe even a 30 plus year project right here so what is the compulsion for disney past that point and again as he astutely points out, he points out about the board. He points out, he's saying, look, listen, Bob Iger, uh, <laughs> he's not going to be there for, you know, for forever. He's what contract until 2026. We'll see if he extends it. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But what happens when the next CEO comes in here and says, well, that was the vision of my predecessor, but it's not the vision of mine. We're going to take this company in a different direction when it comes to the $60 billion allocated for theme parks, for example. So he touches on some stuff that, that we've been touching on uh, for sure. Well, you don't more, expect that from government officials. I'll but just point more that importantly, out. what if the money you were going to put into the stuff beyond this is the money you need to make up for the fact that you don't have the captive Reedy Creek anymore and you've got higher expenses in Florida? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, absolutely. 100%. Uh, yeah. Lastly here, I uh, can did talk about uh, some interesting stuff. And, and what is at the top of the list in terms of priority for Disney when it comes to expansions and what lands or themes we might be looking at? Uh, 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 this was before the approval, but now it has been approved. With your support, we can ensure that Disneyland Resort and Anaheim continue to thrive for decades to come. We've all heard about the Avatar experience uh -oh. that is at the top of the list for Disneyland Resort. Top of the list for Disneyland Resort. That's crucial okay. right there because a lot of people were, were saying, well, they've announced a lot of projects over the years, like, for example, the Marvel E-Ticket. Are they going to go forward with that? You know, what what uh, is necessarily on the plate 
going forward, when you see the Imagine Possibilities pa page, that's right from the horse's mouth saying that this is going to be the emphasis here. Uh, sorry, uh, somebody was going to say something. I was going to ask you, this is not going to be, there's no place to put this as its own existing standing entity, no. very easily anyway. Right. To, yep. So th I think that's important to pay attention to the nuance there, which is the experience Yes. The avatar yeah. experience. Oh. oh, yes, absolutely. That could be any number of things, as Culture points out. I mean, it, it could literally be a meet and greet, uh, for all we know. Now, I I, I doubt <laughs> they would leverage to that extent. But, you know, hey, look, they promised Westcott and we got DCA. So you never know uh, what these things actually turn, uh, turn into right here. Uh, this uh, area map that you're seeing right now is one of the opportunities afforded to them by Disneyland Ford, for example. So and, and just uh, so people, that, before you go any further... Please. All that stuff you were looking at in those other pictures is to the right. left of this map. Oh, yes. correct to the to the west. This is over on the east side of the property. Right, and this this actually uh, is a reimagining of the Eastern Gateway project that was struck down, uh, not not by necessarily by the city, but by the businesses that were going to be bypassed with the Eastern Gateway project because it, th there was a uh, issue with a security bubble and the uh, the the overpass or the pedestrian walkway that passed over Harbor would have bypassed all of those businesses in the process, right? That you would have, you would have had to walk around in order to get to the Disneyland resort. Apparently that's been addressed with Disneyland forward, but it, it, a lot of those tenants still remain right here. You can see on the upper part of that kind of green triangle right there yeah. is where the bus drop off is. And that takes a lot of space, obviously, especially as it buttresses up to Disney California adventure. Well, if you can take that and, place it somewhere else uh in the case of disneyland forward it was right next to the parking garage that was going to be on the east side of harbor uh, well that that potentially opens up all of that landmass uh north of hollywood land uh as it exists currently in dca and that's about as the area map calculates right here about 13 acres right there so that's a big expansion uh if you consider that you know star wars galaxy edge was 14 acres for example so you know, th there are some opportunities, uh, even uh, from old plans. And yes, absolutely, Lou, to your and, point, downtown Disney for sure. Go ahead. And, and, and just to comment, if that becomes the quote unquote Pandora experience, those hotels are going to hate life. <laughs> yeah. Well, just just think about, first of all, why it didn't go before. See, every one of those rectangles over there on the right is a different hotel. There's a whole row of them. Right. There. And right. they're all, what, 100, 300, 400 room max hotels, basically. Probably so most of them not that big. A couple of them are very nice, by the way. I've stayed in a couple of those. But they all have a coffee shop. So you're a family, and you're going to Disneyland from somewhere in Southern California. You get up at the crack of dawn to beat the freeway traffic, and you get there about 7.30 a.m., and you say, well, let's have breakfast at one of the hotel coffee shops over here. That's got to be cheaper than Main Street, for God's sakes, and we're on a budget. And that hotel has... 120 rooms and a 50, 60 seat coffee shop. And every morning for breakfast, 30 or 40 of those seats are people going to the park and they disappear. Yeah. What does that do to your business? And here's another question. Right. We just saw a renaming of uh, the second gate in Paris. If it's got Pandora in it, is it still a California adventure? Oh, no, absolutely uh, yeah, that's not. Exactly well, right the, there. the themes mean nothing at Walt Disney uh, anymore. Is it Disneyland Adventure it, Park? Is it, it, I, uh, I, I think it'll drop adventure altogether. Uh, Disney's California might be something. They, they, do you remember, uh, Vash, when they were talking about renames, all the different names that they cycled through for this park? It was substantial. Not to mention the lot. fact, I just want to add on, I cannot emphasize this enough. Those hotels are going to hate life. If that's Pandora, because it's going to be just like what happened to the hotels and the convention center for Radiator Springs. It's going to be a wall of metal mesh that your hotels will look in on. And yes. the rooms, that the, the areas that used to maybe be able to afford you a view of fireworks and other events won't be able to anymore. That's right. You can that's see. That's right. You can see right here, this was the old Eastern Gateway uh, project right. site right there. You can see the pedestrian walkway up above. And remember, they got rid of the carousel. Uh, as you yes. astutely pointed out there, culture, they got rid of the carousel. They they, they basically bought it with a share, share corporation, uh, uh, closed it down, 
removed it in preparation for the Eastern Gateway. Again, this was like 10 years ago almost now. Uh, so this project is project is being renewed uh, and, and seen different, uh, a different light under Disneyland Ford. We'll have to see how this product, how this section changes because apparently they didn't reincorporate the businesses, but and we'll by see. By the way, it's worth it to note the history of DCA in that when it first opened, it was a very classy upscale experience in a lot of ways. You had the, the uh, Wolfgang Puck restaurant. You had the Robert Mondavi winery with a very nice restaurant, actually a, a, a quick service sort of with wine. And a very, in fact, I always tell the story. I was there literally opening day as a press representative and, um, Michael Mondavi, who I know or knew, uh, was son of Robert Mondavi, was standing there amongst the grapevines uh, on the hillside there that's the backside of the uh, the Grizzly Peak thing. And yeah. one of the little Disney cast girls thought it was somebody who'd just gotten up into the bushes and was about to kick him out. And she was going, sir, sir. I said, excuse me, do you know who that is? She says, no. I said, believe me, he's outstanding in his field. And she just kind of didn't get it. And Michael fell down laughing and they went from there. It was trying to be... Hey, if you're from Beverly Hills, West Side, the Valley, nice places, uh, yeah. Huntington Beach, and you kind of get a little hoi polloi fed up with Disneyland, here's your it's, chance it's, to go and have really good food yeah, and really right. good wine and also enjoy the Disney experience. Mm -hmm. That all died yep. because there weren't enough people willing to pay what were then. Now would be considered absolutely cheap prices for that. And look there what's happened to the economy since. So. There is an infamous story, interestingly enough, with that whole thing where uh, Wolfgang Puck apparently, you know, used to uh, what is now what is it? Lamplight Lounge used to yeah. be Wolfgang Puck's restaurant right there. And apparently um, uh, Disney kind of strong armed into it, them into a deal that promised a lot of things. Obviously, California Venture tanked when it first opened and a lot of those promises never came to fruition. And they were so dis uh, upset about all of those things that upon leaving, they destroyed the kitchen. So. <laughs> that was an interesting uh, thing that happened right there. But well, they probably no. gutted their equipment to use in their successful uh, pizza place spinoffs that were going in all over the world back then. Mm, um, interesting. interesting. I, oh, I could tell you stories about Wolf all day long, but I won't. I promise. Hey, we this should have is... a food question show. <laughs> the Hollywood Commissary with Lou and you. Anyway, oh, uh... there you go. Oh, that's... <laughs> Listen, right. this is. This is a very consequential thing for Disney, for Disney and for the city of Anaheim, for sure. There's a lot of uh, uh, revenues that are going to be coming in for this. But but most importantly, this is the biggest thing to happen to the Disneyland Resort since the Disneyland Resort was first established in about 1996. And upon opening of uh, Downtown Disney and the Grand California in 2001, 2000-ish, uh, uh, California Venture, of course. So this is huge. This is massive. We, we there's a lot of proposed things that are, are are surrounding this. The Imagine the Possibilities page. You can go ahead and discard that. I think they're going in a different direction entirely with this. Uh, third Gate, I I think is is very likely, but we'll just have to see how much Disney wants to dedicate towards this project now that it has been officially approved. Three years in the making, folks. <laughs> Well, just to kind of bring this all around to an ending, I will say this, $1.9 billion is all they are committed to. Of that, there's certain millions right. of dollars that are contributed to, uh, to public work pro projects and stuff. And in, 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 in it's going to be infrastructure, street redo, all kinds of stuff, pedestrian bridges and such, and maybe some park expansion. The problem is, is that Avatar, any Avatar experience is going to cost you a billion dollars. Yeah. So yep. I, I cannot see them based on the budget they're willing to commit to over the course of a decade, which they keep mm -hmm. talking about, is pretty much earmarked for other countries and not the United States. So once again, I anticipate this will be very disappointing to Anaheim residents. I don't know about the rest of you. But well, I, I think that 1.9 to 2.4 like billion is most likely just infrastructure changes here and has nothing to do with what they will actually it's, install it, into these it's spaces. It's plowing the field to get it ready to plant something. It's not what they plant. Oh, no, yeah. I, I don't disagree yeah. with you all. What yeah. I'm What I'm saying is they don't have enough money earmarked anywhere that builds out a third gate, and they don't have enough money right. anywhere 
that does more than build the shopping district or whatever else that they start to try to lay out because you might as well ditch downtown Disney at this point. Cause it's been run through twice now with bad ideas before this. So anyway, yeah, I, I uh, it's a fair point. Uh, yeah, there is no, there is not in this allotment. And I right. think there's a provision where they can spend up to 2.5. They can get out of that if they take like a $50 million hit or whatever. They're going to take it, folks. Trust me. It's going to be 1.9, if, if anything. And and the that's moral... the thing. How do you account for that? Uh, that's, that's, those are, those are open questions. Right. Disney there, is but... very good at finding things to count towards projects that aren't necessarily the exact purpose of that project. But uh, and, before we wrap moral, this up, I, the moral the... of the story, if I can stress this, is, if you're a citizen and the government comes to you with this plan, that this huge corporation that is a big financial contributor to your town says, we want permission to do this. They're asking for permission to do something, but they are in no way guaranteeing they're going to do frozen Pandora or a hot dog stand. The right. contents are TBD when we feel like it. And that's the bottom line. This is not the unveiling of Epic Universe with detailed renderings that, and, and actual buildings that look like the concept art. Where's there for a concept, okay? What's worth so, pointing out is that Disney's biggest release, Disneyland's biggest release this year, is going to be TBA. Of course, that being Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Uh, is there anything <laughs> else we... Uh, is there anything else we need to add in here before we wrap this up? Uh, you know, uh, Vash, I actually did want to ask you, uh, I saw some interesting pictures coming out of the comments, uh, the comment portion uh, here. Do you have any uh, any unusual comments that you might be able to share with us, perhaps at TPP Live later today? Ooh. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, there there are some interesting comments for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was it was it was. If you've ever seen uh, people of Walmart, it was the Disney version of that. A lot of it. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> there were some people who were uh, dressed in very unusual attire. There were people who definitely wanted you to know that they were a Hispanic woman and that they weren't standing for this. Uh, there were a lot of people who were very, um, uh, let's say, ex eccentric and, and and very passionate about their about their viewpoints. And, and uh, that should hey, be a it's, whole. It's fun. the OC gang, and Florida man's got nothing on the OC man. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, I think we need to wrap this up here. Uh, we have we've we've spoken for about a half hour here. I'm sure that our commenters are chomping at the bit to to leave us their opinions in the comment section down below, because there is a lot to talk about when it comes to Disneyland and government and the merging of those two things, which should not be merged for the most part. But sometimes it has to happen if you want to expand your theme park business. It seems like this is a win for the corporation here and and it is yet to be seen how that's going to turn out for the people of Anaheim. Uh, of course, like this video if you like this video. If you haven't done it yet, you need to go over to the T3PO channel. That is T3P and the letter O or at that pod place on YouTube. Uh, and go check out the new shows there. Uh, Lou Wasserman is, is hosting a panel of him and Vash just going over all of the incredible questions well, uh, that you Vash have is the host. Hollywood. I'm just along for the ride. Come on. Oh, man. that's right. That's right. All right. Well, you need to go check that out. And of course, go check out the Culture Casino channel and the Six Minute Daily every day at 10 a.m. 1045 Eastern Time. Is it culture? Yes. Perfect. Uh, and of course, consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.